for the chess plays. All right, I see we're live. This is good. We had to switch the stream keys. As you know, Twitch had uh, a data breach relatively recently. So I think on the, to be on the safe side, Lee Chess decided to uh, switch the keys for their streaming, which is a smart policy and yeah, just good IT security in general for many aspects of life, right? Yeah, it did work. No joke, Chess. Good stuff. Good to see you. All right, let's get the first game going. You guys know the drill. Hey, K Buckby, look at We have a familiar face in the first game. <laughs> familiar face here. Let's do this. Good luck, K Buckby. <laughs> this is a longtime viewer of my channel. They're very frequent, frequently in Lee Chess Play streams as well. Good player. Well over 2,000. Yeah, let's get it. All right, so against this one, I like to play d5 because it threatens this move, which K Buckby knows, evidently. Uh, I feel like e5 is the move here. I don't quite remember. Uh, takes maybe knight c3 if I go e4. Whoa, d4. All right. Let's see what this move's about. I don't really know, so I'm just going to take it. Greetings, Malcolm. Greetings, Ratchet. Also, Lord Clickbait, Gray Sensei. Numeroid, howdy, howdy. Yeah. Great to see everyone here. Uh, is Queen E2 coming? Let's just play this. Happy Sunday. It is a beautiful fall day here. I have my door open. If it gets too noisy, some ambulances start coming by that you guys can hear. Just a lot of traffic. Let me know. I may end up closing it here soon anyways. But uh, I'm letting that fall breeze wash over me. Yeah, I've got the, the jack-o'-lantern in the back. We're fully in this, the fall spirit over here. Hello, Abyssum. Greetings to all our viewers following on both platforms, Twitch and YouTube. I gotta pull up my Leeches YouTube, by the way. Let's see what they're. Oh. I hear myself in the background. That's not good. <laughs> all right. There we go. Hello, Brett on YouTube. Greetings to Charles as well. All right. Time to castle. I think bishop c4 can just be met by queen takes g2 here. So K Buckby has an issue with how to develop this light square bishop. Greeting strut. Also hairy chess. Threat here or is it? Is it actually a threat? You decide. I play the moves. You decide. But yeah, white's position is a little bit too loose. So knight c7 can be met by queen e5 check. And k buckby is not going to be happy about that one. That is a full piece. No easy forks here, k buckby. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Brightside. Along with uh, Francis. Hello. Okay, let's just keep this simple. Let's take and then develop here. I'll get rid of that knight. Knight seems mildly annoying. White has the bishop pair, but I'm going to blockade the d5 square and shut down this dark square bishop. <laughs> Hi, Buck B. Wait, Buck B, are you different from K Buck B? My opponent? Cheap tactics? That's not a cheap tactic. That's a legit tactic. Hello, Jovatov. Is 3 plus 2 okay? No, you have to challenge 3 plus 0. So we do have to be pretty strict on that just to keep things rolling. He's your brother. Ah, okay. My condolences, at least in this game. <laughs> I'm sure he's a great brother. <laughs> but this one is not looking good for him. All right, let's jump here. Let's attack the queen. Maybe knight c2 coming in. Let's see where Buckby puts the queen. Yeah, so let's see. I could play something like this. I think I'm just going to play a5, just shore up the knight over here. And maybe then sink this into c3. Take, take. And we're looking to win d4 next. That's next on the agenda. Hello, Heisenberg. What's the situation on my GM norm? I have not played any tournaments for two years. <laughs> I guess that's the situation. 
Uh, let's take here. I'm okay with trading and then letting him take a5. We'll get some stuff off the board, I suppose. What now? B6, maybe? Mm. Yeah, I guess we'll play that. I'd like to be able to keep this pawn, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. Might just have to allow Buck B to win a pawn back, but Buck B will have to trade down with me in doing so. Now I'm going to go here next. That's the plan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, uh, bishop c4. Now, nah, let's go bishop e6. Further trade down. Go for this. If king h2 to avoid, then I would win the f2 pawn. All right, thank you for the game, K Buckby. Yeah, knight c7 got you there, although the position wasn't looking too hot before then. But yeah, thank you for the game. Who we got next? Joke mate, good luck. 1804, let's play d4. You can challenge rated or casual, it doesn't matter. But it just has to be 3 plus 0. That's the one stipulation. This is the martial defense. Problem here is that black cannot contest the center with the pawn. So when you're declining the queen's gambit, it's usually best to play e6 or c6. So you can recapture with a pawn should white take on d5. Here, this somewhat resembles like a Grunfeld or something, but a poor version for black because their knights are getting kicked around. Maybe you could draw a parallel to the Alakine's defense. Any plans to return to tournament play soon? I'm playing around with the idea of playing in maybe like a month and a half at the uh, U.S. Masters. That's a, it's going to be a pretty strong event, but nothing definitive yet. All right, let's be aggressive. Let's try to attack this bishop, see what happens. H5, I'm going to play knight e5 and put some uncomfortable pressure here on f7 maybe. Let's, should I take here? Let's take here. Trade queens take with the king so black can't play bishop takes e4. Greeting super baguette. Hello queener as well. Can I play a Jobava opening today? Yeah, I can try that, Rimmer. I'll give that a shot. I was a little disappointed before I went live. I tried to check the uh, US championship games because I've been following that pretty closely, the U.S. Championship and the U.S. Women's Championship. It's going on right now. But today is a rest day. <laughs> it was like, ah, uh, painful. You know when you're following a tournament, and then all of a sudden, you're used to the schedule, like the games were at 1 o'clock Central every day, but today, just rest day, no games. <laughs> but at least we're here. <laughs> is nightbot giving you the wrong challenge link yeah that might need to be updated maybe numeroid or uh no joke chess can update that looks like Vasif durabali was playing a lee chess plays recently and it might still be the old one from that let's take here I'm gonna go bishop f4 next i think we'll keep this pin there's no rush to capitalize on the pin knight How's Minnesota? It's, it's great. Yeah. I uh, was traveling a little bit last month. But now I'm back home. This is my favorite time of year. I just feel extremely energized in the fall. I don't know about you guys. Or, I mean, it's going to depend where you live. If there's like a significant change of seasons. But this is my absolute favorite time of year. It's not too cold yet. I just feel in inspired sometimes. Oftentimes, in September, October, even into November. Okay, let's just castle. I'm going to castle this way. It feels a little more open on the queen side, so we're going to go this direction instead. Let's do this. And I'm looking for knight d5, unless black's going to initiate a trade down here. Corrupt material, so default thing is to encourage trades. Win by war of attrition. Let's 
give a check. Look for a massive swap here. It sometimes feels a little boring to win this way, but it's the most effective. Don't complicate things when you're ahead. Like your default state when you're ahead in material is that further trades are just going to increase your chances of winning. Let's go here. Bishop here. I can play b3, but I want to guard f2. What will I do next? Maybe bishop c4 or bishop c6, perhaps. Might be a little overloading going on here, but looks like joke mate may not make it. I go there. Uh, let's just play this one just for absolute safekeeping on the f2 square. And then I'm going to play bishop c6 if I get a chance. Let's say black plays a4. Okay, thank you for the game, joke mate. Yeah, so as I was talking about here, you can kind of see this in the stats. So in this position, if black's going to decline the gambit, c6 and e6, c6 is the Slav, e6 is the queen's gambit declined. Those are the two most popular moves. There's other stuff too, like knight c6, Shigorin defense. Um, but you don't want to play knight f6. We have to scroll down a fair ways in the master's database. I don't know if you guys can see this. Yeah, you can barely see it right here. The bar for black's winning percentage in this line at master level is tiny, you know? compared to some of these other defenses. So, yeah, you don't want to play this because fundamentally after takes, black has to recapture with the knight or the queen if they want to win the pawn back. White has these two pawns unopposed. Compare that to something like the Slav, where whenever white takes, black plans to recapture with their pawn on d5 and keep two center pawns. So a little opening tip right there. Red Avalanche, let's, let's do this. Good luck. Um, let's play e5. Matty Showbiz asks, how often do you ignore that principle and go for a tactical attack when up in material? Yeah, you know, I might be in the camp that really likes to trade down perhaps even more often than I should in some of those positions. But that's not to say that I'm ignoring attacking opportunities too. It's just that let's say I have a choice between a potentially promising but also slightly risky attack versus just a swap and I'm already up material, I'm going to err on the side of the swap because it's simpler. Okay, watch out for smothered mate. Oh, okay. Now, I can't take this pawn because of queen a4. That's important. No smothered mate knight f3. Good evening, Lou. Knight d5 play. Let's just castle here. By the way, last week on Lee Chess Plays, I lost my final game of the session. Those of you who are around will surely remember, but uh, I went down in, the, down in the bond cloud. It was a sad day. Let's play C6. Yeah, I did lose on time. Yep. Had a tough game. I think my opponent, I wish I remembered their username. I think they were like 2100, maybe 2200. This one I feel like we can take because I can drop the queen back, anchoring the knight. Hello, Darkwing Dog. Greetings, Charles on YouTube. Also, Het. Charles asking, will I play the titled arena next month? No plans to? I got to admit, I've been slacking on some of the bigger tournaments like the titled arena and uh, title Tuesday just hasn't really, I say slacking, but it hasn't really worked for my schedule recently, but I do like playing those. Uh, ah, this, this might win the pawn back because looks like I'm going to have to move the knight and then white can take here. So where do I want to put this knight? Let's go to E5. And then try to complete development. This bishop's a little bit annoying to get out, though, right? Let's do this. Try to go bishop e6 next. Greetings, Broken Blade. Do I have any plans to put some new, two, new YouTube videos out? Yeah, I do. Um, also, another thing I haven't been doing lately. But yeah, I will be back on YouTube in the near future, Broken Blade. Thank you for asking.
All right, now I've coordinated, I've completed development. What to do next? I might try to attack with my pawns on the queen side, play like a5, a4. This looks a little bit vulnerable if I can get a pawn down there. Don't think I have much to do on the king side, but I'm content with just being solid here. Queen c7. All right. There's this queen alignment, but I don't think I can exploit that. Let's play maybe bishop e6. I'm offering a trade into an endgame here. But I don't know. I kind of like my knight versus their bishop in the endgame. Because I've got a lot of pawns on light squares, so I feel like this bishop may not be the strongest. But truthfully, in this pos position, it's probably about equal. Oh! Oh! Just as I said that, right on cue, Red Avalanche gave me a rook. Maybe they were thinking, you know, John, I know you got a tough stream ahead today. Two hours of playing viewers. You're smarting from your loss in the last Lee Chess Play stream. So let me, let me give you a gift here. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Sorry, Red Avalanche. You were doing well, though. I mean, Bishop takes e4. I think this is anyone's game. Let's just take a peek at the eval right here. Hey, it even has you slightly ahead. If you play bishop takes e4 or rook f e1, I guess the idea to take with the rook. You're a tiny bit ahead here. So that probably means I made a mistake somewhere. I mean, hmm, interesting. You know, taking the pawn isn't actually that good. Bishop d2 is the best move here. I was a little skeptical that you gave me this pawn, but you seem to be able to regain it. And engine says you're doing great here. You're better. So, yeah, up, good game up until that point. Thanks for challenging. <laughs> Do I have to beat the whole family tree here? I took down K-Buck B. Now he's sending in his little brother to take me on. <laughs> I'm sorry, Buck B clan. Mama and Dad Buck B? I mean, these are your, 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 uh, <laughs> your children. Maybe come pick them up after this game. Is there like a sister or a third brother in the mix I'm going to have to take on soon? <laughs> All right. Good luck. Be Buck B. Buck Ben. <laughs> yeah, someone's making the account Mama Buck B right now. Oh. Mamas, don't let your sons... Don't let your babies grow up to blunder B2 pawns and rooks in the corner. <laughs> Stop bullying the Buck B family. I love the Buck B family. K Buck B being a longtime viewer, I, you know, I gotta, I gotta rib him a little bit. B Buckby, I you know, I had no idea K Buckby had a, a brother who plays chess as well. Hey Steph Yule says I just watched your video on the opera game. Really enjoyed watching that one. Also, I managed to memorize the game, being very short. My first memorized chess game ever. Thank you for all your content. Hey, great to hear. Is that one of the games I did on a like a physical board? The famous Morphe Opera House game played against the Duke and the Count. And a Paris opera in, I want to say 1858. Does that sound right? 1858, Morphe was a guest in an opera box and is a... Uh, his friends, the Duke and the Count, who invited him. Um, were more interested in playing Morphe than they were in watching the opera. And for Morphe, it was the opposite. <laughs> but he played one of the most memorable chess games ever. Oh, nice, Steffo. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that brings back some fond memories. I like making those, those videos with a physical board.
This is an optimistic pre-move, but you never know. How is Paul Morphy so much better than all of his peers? You know, just one of those generational talents. People sometimes ask, like, what historical chess player would you like to have dinner with or play a game with? And I always answer Morphy. He's just the one guy, maybe because he was, you know, de facto the best player in the world before uh, the world championship was a thing. And just looking at his games, you could just tell he had such an acumen for the game in a period of time where there wasn't that much information for him to go by. You know, there weren't any uh, conventional resources that we now take for granted easily at hand for Morphe. You know, there were some books and stuff like that, but just a largely self-taught prodigy. And he played such interesting dynamic chess. Well, I had 92 there. I guess I can still do it. Such interesting dynamic chess that I'd love to just talk to him, pick his brain a little bit. All right. B. Buckby, thank you for the game. Thanks to the Buckby brothers. Yeah, that pawn hang on B2 was an issue here. So... Against this dark square bishop, you might want to play knight c3 or maybe pawn c3 to block it. But this, this setup is a little bit defensive for white. You can be a little more aggressive. Oh, sister. Ah, okay. Got it. All right. For some reason, I thought this was uh, Buckby's brother, but it's Buckby's sister. All right. Well, cool. Shout out to the Buckby family. Thanks again for the game. Let's... Keep going here. Okay, turkey jive. Let's do this. Didn't Morphe hate talking chess? Well, he ended up retiring very, very young. I mean, he was out of the game by like age 21 or 22, which is unbelievable given how much Morphe accomplished. Also, the fact that he went to Europe and beat all of Europe's best players. Uh, he was like done with chess by, you know, early, early 20s. Turkey jive, are you there? Knock, knock. We may have to move on. Oh, sometimes just hovering over the abort button gets people to uh, make a move. But yeah, Morphe was concerned that he wouldn't be taken seriously and that he wouldn't be able to earn a living playing chess, which was you know, a very legitimate concern in that period of time and still is for a lot of chess players. This is an interesting little system. Bishop g5. Black can play h6, but then I'm going to go back to e3 and kind of argue that the pawn on h6 could be a target in the future. Do I play Rapid online? Yep. Yeah, I was playing Rapid just a couple days ago, actually, on Lee Chess. Let's go here. We can't blunder this pawn. We need to keep that safe. Okay, now I've got a threat. And usually the plan's just going to be bishop e2, castles here. With this knight on e5, I kind of wonder if I can play h3 and then f4, though, too. I'm definitely looking at that possibility as well. I've played a4 because I want to shut down b5 as a thing. I want to be able to take multiple times. Maybe black could risk b5, but it doesn't seem good for their health. Let's go here, and I'm going to lean on this structure. Now, g4 looks like a natural move, but it might run into this some sort of pushing around of the knights. I could see some scenario where the black knight goes back to h8, and that can't possibly be good for black. Ooh, okay. Queen a5. Well, we got to take this now. We're going to try to get through here. I think black's going to try to throw themselves at me on the queen side, but the king side is looking pretty sparsely protected here for black. Oh. I don't know about that one, though. Rook takes a4. Do I play the shield arena? Is the shield arena... Is that rapping? I feel like I played it before, but I usually just play the, the hourly arenas. Rapid blitz bullet. I like that they're continuously going and you can always get a... You know, a tournament format, quick games against like-minded individuals. 
This will be checkmate. Okay. Thank you for the game, Turkey. Um, so, yeah. So this is an attacking setup for White. There's some strategic aspects for sure as well. I think here, Turkey, I don't know if Bishop D7 is the best move because you kind of want to keep that square open in case you got to retreat or maneuver your knights. I think here you got to play H5 or King H7. Those are probably the only moves that somewhat keep you in the game. I think G5 is just too risky. Yeah, Engine likes H5 and, you know, look at that eval. You're right in there. So, yeah, G5 on the other hand, it makes it easy for me to make contact. Can really see how big of a difference this is in the evaluation. H5 versus G5. But with H5... I have a much harder time engaging my pawns and creating open lines against Black's King. Whereas this, this is already a hook for me to use. And, you know, I was envisioning some line like this if, if Black tries to keep it closed. But I have nice possibilities here. H5, I can banish that knight to H8. Yeah, White looks to have an overwhelming advantage here. Uh, maybe I could go after the H6 pawn as well. So already going south for Black here. Thanks for the game. We got a lot of challenges here. This is great. FAQT. Good luck. We have a Lee Chess patron in the game. Awesome to see. Oh, and a Team Scanty member perhaps as well. Look at that. Very good, very good. They're playing one of my favorite moves, Queen D8. Now just don't blunder Bishop G4. Do not blunder that, which allows Bishop takes F7 or Knight E5. Very important to avoid that. Bring the bishop here. And maybe I'll castle queen side. We'll see what black plays. <laughs> yeah, can't get more goodwill than with that. Exactly. Now, FAQ could try to win a pawn here by doing this, driving my knight away, and then trying to win d4. But that seems pretty risky to me. But maybe. What if I go here now? Let's try to do this. Let's see what happens if I attack c7. Looks a little awkward for black to defend. I don't think they can defend it. Because knight d5 I'm going to take. Remove the defender of the c7 pawn. Polar Cow says, First time I ever beat a Grandmaster was with a queen d8 Scandi in an online simul. Very nice. Who is that? Who would you take down? Let's take. I think that's a good decision, by the way, for Black. Just letting me capture. Had to do it. Now I think Rook B8. Got to save that Rook. I'm going to wheel this back out. I'm not going to do some discovery. Just not worth it. I don't want to trade my two miners for the Rook. Um, A6 is interesting because if I take here, maybe Black takes here is the thing. So I'm going to bring the Knight all the way back. Let's see if FAQ, yep, they do, good. FAQ is noticing my threats. So that is good. Um, what should I play here? I mean, this position, albeit a pawn extra for me, is not so simple. I'm going to play a consolidating move now. I'm the one who's retreating. I'm trying to guard D4, just in the case that this gets played, and maybe I can put a pawn here. I think doing that is kind of nice. Uh, let's play this one first, though. Just to stop the A-pawn advance. I love gaming. Says, how can I contact Lee Chess directly? I believe you can email them. There is a support function somewhere on here, too. Also, there's a couple Lee Chess mods. There we go. No joke, Chess. Just put the link for contact. It was Puria Darini. Ah, okay. Darini. Is that a Iranian Grandmaster? You know, there's a ton of young Grandmasters nowadays that maybe it's just a generational thing, but I used to know pretty much all the Grandmasters by name. You know, not like I knew them personally, but it's getting increasingly harder these days to like recognize a lot of the younger generation's names because there are so many young GMs coming out of the woodwork. 
Aha, uh -huh. Darini is an Iranian grandmaster. Okay. Yeah, that is an up and coming chess country for sure. Iran. I mean, probably Ali Reza being the best example of talents coming out of there. But um, yeah, just a number of guys. Uh, Parhamov, for example, as well. Super strong. Tabate, or Tabatabai. I uh, don't know exactly how to pronounce his name, but another really, really strong player. India, too. I mean, Iran and India, I would say the two, two countries with the biggest crop of young talent. So they're going to be forces to be reckoned with in future Olympiads. They already are, especially India. India does extremely well at, uh, you know, the Olympiad and team competitions. They're so deep. <laughs> nice. Half full, Nelson. Okay, take. Now, if queen takes, I have knight d7. Ooh, and this one runs into this. That's why I, did, I made that trade to try to remove the defender. That said, FAQT, for their rating, they played a very good game. So kudos to them. Maybe queen d5 was interesting there going after this. Check. I'm going to pick this knight up, it looks like. All right. FAQ, thank you for the game. I think you were hanging right in there. Even after, I mean, I give you a lot of credit because even after you lost C7 or it was clear that you were going to lose the pawn on C7, you didn't panic. When you castled here, that's a mature decision to, especially if you recognize this threat, just say, you know, I can't defend it. Because you could have made things a lot worse. Like say you go knight D5 here, which is the only other real attempt to defend unless you're going to play something like E5. But that could have made things a lot worse. I would have taken and... Then that's how you end up with something like this. So, yeah, good game. I mean, I had somewhat of an advantage after this, but you made me work in this one. So keep it up. Good luck with your chess improvement. Okay. Me, GR. Good luck. 1576. Uh, Charles, no, I don't know that Grandmaster, by the way. Charles on YouTube. Does not sound familiar. What should I play? Let's play... Should I try to play a Stafford? Shout out to Eric Rosen. Let's give it a shot. They decline it. Okay. Well, let's play Four Knights now. <clears throat> and do the center fork trick. Okay, Bishop C4. This is known to run into Knight takes E4. Idea being takes, you can play d5 and win the pawn back. White can play bishop takes f7 here if they see the point of this. But that, I think, is even a worse version for white because black obtains a super strong center. Two mobile pawns in the middle. 1,948 GMs awarded by FIDE to date. Wow. Is that a cumulative? Like that's the uh, total number of titles ever given, the GM titles by FIDE? Or is that the current number of GMs, um, GMs who are still living? All right, let's go here. Double attack. Hmm. Wow, cumulative. That's an exclusive club, right? So only 2,000 individuals who have ever walked the earth have ever been awarded the GM title by FIDE. No, less than 2,000. We're about 50 away, but that is ultra exclusive. You can be GM 2,000? I would love to be. Hello, Jivan. Thank you for tuning in from India. Shout out to all the Indian viewers. You guys are great. Thanks to everyone for tuning in around the world. I always look forward to this. I love that chess is such an international game. 
We're really, really lucky that chess unites us. Let's go for this. Bishop h3. Also a pretty strong move, but I like bishop g4 because it compels white to play f3. And you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking I might even... Well, f3, it'd be really nice to get my bishop to h4, but white is controlling that square. So I think I should probably just capture. Maybe I can capture with the pawn. I see, in Eric Rosen's words, a funny line here. I see a funny line. Rook f2, queen g1. Oh, we're going to get it. It's the rare pawn mate. Ooh, that's nice. Controlling e2 with the bishop, and this is a pin. Pawn f2 checkmate. I wonder, though, if uh, e takes f3 is not just the best move here. Let's see. It looks pretty crushing because white is so passive. Mm, bishop takes f3 may be stronger. Ah, d4 instead of d3. Or d4 or d3. Okay, yeah. Let's say d4, but I guess I could still win a rook here if I wanted to. Something like this, for example. So white can fight on, but they're losing a lot of material. So, yeah, this is an instructive line. You see this a lot at amateur play. This is the four knights defense. The main move here is bishop b5 for white because bishop c4, kind of playing along the lines of an Italian game, it's known to run into this move, and black has no problems. This is the master's database, and you can see what black scores here. Very healthy winning percentages. Black is scoring better than white in this line. There's a couple variations like this where white gets their pawn back, but you don't want to mess around with this line. The knights are unstable. These pawns are super strong. Despite the seeming discomfort here for the black king, it's not an issue for black at all. You can see black has won every single game in this line in 19, in 19 contests. Don't go into that. Yeah, th this is probably the best line, relatively speaking, and due to the fork, black's going to win the pawn back. White can play bishop d3 or... Yeah, bishop e5, but evidently this is just not great. I remember a game. I have a game in my Climbing the Rating Ladder series on YouTube where my opponent played this, and I think I played queen d5 in this position. But evidently, queen g5 is even better, kind of like I tried to do in this game. Going after the pieces here. So, yep, just, just watch out for that. That center fork trick, that's a classic. Thank you for the game, M-I-I-G-R. Fade, 21. Let's do this. Wesley played into that line. Yeah, I think he was black there, it said. Uh, let's play knight f6 here. Good luck, fade. Let's play maybe a Nimzo. Nimzo Indian coming in. All right. Um... I'm going to go b6. We'll play this in classical fashion, as in bringing the bishop to b7. I'm going to keep my dark square bishop. Debatable how good this is, but you know, let's, uh, let's give it a shot. Let's play d5 now, just try to fight for the center. I feel like white's trying to gain a pawn roller here at some point. Uh, yes, I do, Charles, by the way. It's on my YouTube channel. Navy SEAL on YouTube asked, John, are you interested in getting your GM norms? Yeah, I would like to at some point, but I just haven't been putting in the work. Studying chess in particular. I know I'd have to make a lot of effort in uh, beefing up my openings, for sure. Let's take this. Openings, calculation, those are things that usually fall by the wayside when you're inactive from serious competition. And you got to make an effort to get those back. Ooh, a bit of an inaccuracy, I think, but we'll see what white does here. I have one Grandmaster Norm. Okay, I think Knight B5 was strong there for white. Probably would have won the Bishop pair. Now I'm kind of tempted to take here, but I still run into this. So let's just play A6.
I achieved my first norm in, I always forget if it was 2014 or 2013. I think it was 2013 at a tournament in St. Louis. Ooh, very tempted to do this, but I'm just going to play h6. I, I'm kind of wondering where white's going to put their king. They castle. All right, so now I got to take. I mean, this is morally forced, right? We got to win a pawn towards the enemy king. Discovery on my queen. Let's go here. Now white might think, oh, let's trade queens, but they're going to drop the knight if they do. So careful, careful. I'm probably going to bring a rook over here next and attack down the C-file, threaten stuff like bishop takes a3 as well. Okay, so I can take here, but this looks pretty darn good too. I think taking is probably best. So let's do that. Kappa Crush says, I just started the Foundation Yusupov series after a long break. Yeah, that's a great series of books. They're actually on my shelf back here. You guys can't see them under the license plate. Ooh, and now I take. There's a pin here. White just undefended their knight on c3. And resignation. Yeah, thank you for the game, Fade. You had a chance with knight b5, maybe. Otherwise, I think you probably pushed too many pawns in the opening and made too many pieces, too many moves with the same pieces. Yeah, like roundabout here, the white position is looking super loose, I'd say. But I think queen c7 was a mistake on my part. Yeah, pretty big mistake. I'm minus two and a half here, or plus two and a half, however you want to look at it, probably due to my development lead. And I played queen c7, and you had an opportunity for this. And I could think about taking here, but the problem is, even though I win your queen, my rook is trapped at the end. This is very good for white, winning for white. So I would have probably moved my queen again had you played this, but definitely getting my dark square bishop would be helpful for you. Thanks for the game. How to decide which rook to bring to the open file. That is a classic question. Let's play c4 in this game. And I've heard that jokingly answered by saying, you decide which rook to bring to an open file by... Uh, you know, going with your instincts and then immediately changing your mind before you play the move. <laughs> I explained that poorly, but basically deciding on the opposite rook of what you'd like to play. <laughs> but yeah, it's a difficult question. I think one major consideration with that is asking yourself, what will the other rook be doing? So if you play, a, like if you play rook AD1 and you also have rook FD1 possible, what will your rook on the F file be doing after you play rook AD1? Like, where is it going to go? Because if you can answer that question, then you might be on your way to cracking it. But there's a lot of cases where there's not a huge difference between which rook you choose, truthfully. I think black's going to play C6 and dig in here. They're going to be a little bit cramped, though, for sure. So when the opponent's cramped, you usually want to avoid trading pieces. So let's say black plays knight bd7. Okay. Mm, let's go knight c4. I'm going to go here, and I might try for bishop f4. It depends what black does, but let's see. Mm. Okay, maybe, maybe here now? Kind of a weird move, but I'm thinking about... Trying to go knight d6. Queen a3 stays out of range of this knight, but queen a3, maybe black can move their queen. This looks interesting, though. Let's do it. And I'm, I'm preventing black from castling, because remember, you cannot castle into, out of, or through check. So I'm preventing black from castling, and I'm focusing in on the d6 square. Maybe bishop f4 coming up. Hello, fried orca. It's going well. Beautiful day here. Yeah, let's do this. I want to try to drop knight d6 and could also play it right away, but that feels like selling out too cheap. Let's do this. Really make black sweat with knight d6 dropping in. Okay, so they challenge. Hmm, probably a pretty good move right there, actually. 
knight b6, because if I take black inserts, this captures. So I think I got to do this immediately and take with a queen. Since bishop takes, knight c4 is a fork. So we got to take with a queen. Still pretty annoying for black, though, because they can't castle for the time being. Knight c4, I'll just go here, and then I'm defending this pawn. Thank you, Fried Orca. Very kind of you to say that. All right, that's a blunder. That's kind of a weird blunder to make because did they really think that pawn was hanging the whole time? Sometimes people have, you know, mental, mental blackouts like that, but that is kind of an odd blunder after several moves of the bishop attacking the pawn on e2. Here's a good example. I could just trade queens here. I'm up material. I'm up a piece for a pawn, so it makes sense. But I feel like it's more uncomfortable for black if I actually keep the queens on board. Again, because they can't castle this direction. So that feels irritating for them. They're probably going to end up castling this way, but I like my bishop in that case. The dark squares are a big, big issue for black. Let's play a4. a5 would drop a knight. Uh, knight d5, I'm happy to take that. Knight d5, I'll take again. If one of the pawns takes, then I can play down the files here. Queen takes, I could potentially take b7 or just leave my queen where it's at. It's difficult to see that knights can move backwards. Yeah, we've already seen that in one of the other games from today. And, and truthfully, last night I streamed. And there was a hilarious moment where I had won my opponent's um, rook in the corner. I was white, and I had played a fork, like on c2. And I had won my opponent's rook in the corner. And I had a knight sitting on a1 that I kind of just assumed was doomed. And my opponent at some point played queen from f3 to b3. And my knight on a1 could have taken their queen, and I just did not see it. I didn't see it whatsoever. The chat was the one who pointed it out after the fact. <laughs> and like classic case of uh, knight backwards blindness. Thank you for the game, Jan. Yeah, so this, this is another line that's problematic. So this is basically the Scandi against C4, the Anglo-Scandinavian. But compared to... The conventional Scandinavian, e4, d5. Here, black actually gets to trade center pawn for center pawn, right? But in the Anglo-Scandinavian, kind of like the martial defense, white has two center pawns against black's one, and black's losing some time. This, this can't be recommended, even though there's some shades of the Scandinavian. That's a bit too much when you're giving them the two center pawns for nothing. Maybe I'll try to show you guys real quick before we play the next game. Uh, let me see if I can locate the game. Um, I won't spend too much time on this, I swear, but it was... Those of you who suffer from night backwards blindness, you'll get a kick out of this. Oh, where was it? Was it yesterday? I've been streaming a lot lately, so the games kind of blend together. Where, where, where? I was playing a much lower rate of player. Wow, it might have been three days ago. Maybe it was four days ago. <laughs> Is it, nah, it wasn't that game. Oh, uh, I want to show it because it was pretty funny. Maybe it never happened. Malcolm says, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, it kind of felt like that, right, Malcolm? Oh, I think it was this game against Unknown. Yeah, 14 hours ago. Okay, so Cliff Notes version. I was black. I got a fork in here. 
And I just assumed this knight was dead because, you know, there's no way out. And in this position, I played knight takes e5, hitting my opponent's queen. Oh, I guess they played queen e3 first. Then I took here. And then they played this move, and I just did not even think about this. Didn't even cross my mind. I just mentally assumed that knight was gone. And I wonder if this was like a forward attack with the knight if I would have seen it. But I took my opponent's bishop, and the chat was like, John, you had a hanging queen there. <laughs> so it happens to everyone. Okay, next game. Hang 98, good luck. The manager says 100% something I would miss. Elvis says I wouldn't have seen it either. <laughs> yeah, backward knight moves. Definitely a weakness for a lot of players. Um, I remember a painful game that I failed to win in the Pro Chess League a few years ago. So I was playing in the Pro Chess League um, on chess.com for my team from Minnesota. And they've changed up the league. They've consolidated a lot of teams nowadays. But basically the format was like four versus four round robin. So you play everyone on the opposing team. Should I go all out here? I'm kind of feeling aggressive, so let's do this. And I was playing the last player. We played a team from China, and I was playing the last player on their team. I outrated them by you know a few hundred rating points, but it was a promising young player. Got a winning position, and at some point, I believe I could have won an ex No. At some point, I was up an exchange and trying to convert the position to a victory. And had I won, our team would have advanced to um, the playoffs. Like, that was basically the scenario. But I missed a backwards knight move from my opponent, and I only ended up drawing the game. And we really needed that victory, as it turned out. I mean, it wasn't, like, completely my fault, so to speak, given that it was a team competition, but that was a consequential game. And it just looks so obvious after the fact, this knight move that my opponent played. It was something like, I don't know, like knight c8, forking two rooks here and here of mine. So it was kind of a weird move, but something I should have seen. And yeah, it just really highlighted to me how difficult those moves are for us to process. I'm purely playing for an attack down the H file here, by the way. Yeah, the Pro Chess League with the, the, a lot of the local teams was pretty fun, wasn't it? No joke. All right, let's take. And if pawn takes here, I could even take with the bishop if I want. Do I have a mate here? Check. Check. There's a lot of checks. I don't know if there's mate per se, though. This is way easier. I mean, I could also take with a queen. I could also just go here. That's probably the most brutal thing of all to do, just threaten mate. It almost feels like I have force mate here, but I'm not quite seeing it. I think I'm just going to go here. Because to avoid mate, black's going to have to play f6 or f5 or <laughs> even queen g5. But I think, let's say f6 is played, I take here. And this is undeniable. Along with this threat, too. How do you deal with losses? The fear of losing puts me off playing chess sometimes. Yeah, you definitely have to learn to live with that. You have to look at losses as data points in this large scatter plot of uh, games that you're going to play towards your improvement in your chess career. It was just another data point. Thank you for the game, Hang. Yeah, I really played caveman style here. This is probably a type of move the computer's not going to like. Yeah, it's not like one of the top, top moves, but it's pretty tough for black when you start battering through like this, just psychologically. Just wants me to go bishop h6 here right away. Not even worry about defending the g4 pawn. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, you had some chances. Bishop takes g4 here, and you're maybe still alive, but the margin for error for black is pretty slim at this point. Make one mistake in a position like this, and it's GG. All right, and look at that. Queen h6 is the top move here. 
Yeah. But pretty much everything sensible is winning for white. Dark squares around black's king are too weak. So, hang. if I were to give you some advice, I think actually black should challenge the center a little bit quicker when white adopts this formation. So maybe e5 right here versus knight bd7. I'm not a big fan of a5. I don't really think you have time for a5 here because a5, you're a long ways away from making contact with my pawns. I know you want to pawn storm me, but compare that to my plan of h4, h5. It takes me one, one less move to make contact with your structure. So I feel like your best bet is still to maybe play more towards the middle, like e5, maybe c6, b, b5, b4, but I got to admit, I already like this position for white. But thank you for the game. Okay, Marsal Marsalka, good luck. 1675. Uh, let's play something off the beaten path here. C5, F5. The center clamp from the side strategy. Trying to control these squares from the wings. Combining the Sicilian and the Dutch. <laughs> Hef Rogue, thank you for subscribing with Prime, by the way. Appreciate that. How many subs does the Lee Chess channel have? Once again, every, every sub goes directly to Lee Chess. 48. Okay. And if you have Twitch Prime, or Amazon Prime, I should say, you can use it for free. It's part of your Amazon Prime membership. You can use it absolutely for free, and you have one of those available to use per month for any streamer that you choose on Twitch. Yeah, my opponent seems to be out of book. Exactly. Let's reinforce. Maybe go here. Hmm, that is strange. No joke. So yeah, I kind of like this in a lot of these middle games because you do gain some nice control over certain squares, like e4. And I have a feeling white's going to go for e4. And when they do that, I could take, I could maybe play f4. Okay, they're going here. Let's just play the bishop out, maybe b5, b4 is an idea. Yep, here we go, e4. Hmm, could capture, I kind of like this move too though. Let's just push, see what happens. Let's push again. Kick that knight. See where the knight lands. Watch this F2 pawn. I might try to launch an attack against F2 in the future. Let's say something like knight E2, queen B6. At some point, my rook might be useful down this file. Oh, half full Nelson gifting a sub to set Landon. Thank you very much. Um, Grandmaster Amon Hamilton, one of the chess bras. Recently played a game where he sacked his queen on F2. Or sorry, he sacked the queen on E3, actually, with a white king on F2. It was a beautiful game. So it kind of reminds me of that. Although not nearly as beautiful, at least yet. <laughs> Hello, Dottie38. I just haven't been posting on YouTube, period, right now. But the standard videos are definitely uh, some of my favorite videos to make. I do have to watch out for this, by the way, but this is a far greater threat taking here. So if white plays queen e2, I wonder if I can play knight takes f2. Because bishop d4 coming in is pretty significant. Could consider the same thing here, but white's queen can join in the defense. I'm not sure how great that is. There's also this move. You know what? Let's let's roll the dice here. Kind of curious what's going to happen. I feel like this is the most interesting move for white. Knight takes g6, but white didn't play it. Yeah, white's playing a little defensively, but I think they had to gamble there with knight takes g6. Is now looks like I'm up a pawn with a fair amount of control. 
Polar Cow with the 400 bits. It says, super cool that Lee Chess hosts these events. I agree. Kudos to Lee Chess. This is awesome. It's a great initiative. They've had uh, Mama Diarov do, do streams. I guess uh, Grandmaster Dira Bali recently did one. So they really are able to include a lot of players and uh, get a nice mix of people doing Lee Chess plays. Anyone on the agenda coming up? Who normally doesn't do it, no joke? Mm, let's play bishop here. Let's try to use these bishops offensively still. Maybe I'll double up. Ooh, take. No defender of the night anymore. Durabali again on Wednesday. All right. Oh, and you're going to do one tomorrow. Nice. Excellent. Like an actual AMA, like on Reddit, or you're streaming tomorrow? Thank you for the game, Arsalka. Yeah, this was interesting. I wonder about knight takes g6. I think... Oh, knight c4. I totally missed. Speaking of knight moves, this is a forward knight move I missed. This is when I took on B2, so I had just played this capture. The computer says, do this, and I could defend, but yeah, this was not part of the plans. Take, take, then take here, and white's better. Look at that. So maybe I should have taken time out to defend that pawn. In fact, the computer wants to push it here. But okay, Marsalko was probably feeling the pressure at this point. Thank you for the game. Greetings, uh, Navy Seal once again on YouTube. Oh, Spiddler fan. Okay. Play D6. Navy Seal was asking, what are your favorite chess streamers? I really like watching uh, Daniel Narditsky. I would say he's my favorite streamer. I feel like he has a nice blend of entertainment and education. And one reason I like him, aside from him being a friend of mine, is that he has a style different than mine. And I feel like I learn a lot from watching him. Because he'll make decisions and play, especially like dynamically in spots where to me it wouldn't be as intuitive to do that. So yeah, he's uh he's my favorite streamer. What do I think about penguin streams? Yeah, I don't watch Andrew as much. I'll pop in occasionally. He's kind of um Streaming inconsistently, I think, probably because of his school schedule and uh, maybe interning work and whatnot. And also, he plays he plays tournaments, too. But, you know, if I want to watch someone who's just amazing at their craft, especially playing quick games, I will watch him, especially if he's playing like Magnus or Hikaru. Those are, you know, very, very entertaining. Okay, I'm feeling like Knight D3 soon might be a good move. Uh, you know what? Let's just sack a pawn. I'm going to do this. White can take here, but I'm going to, kind of like one of the previous games, try to prevent white from castling and play in the center. Ginger GM produces very good content too. Yeah, Simon's super entertaining. Absolutely. Ooh, and white does not take the pawn. All right. Well, now we got to attack, folks. Let's go here. Let's unleash this bishop. Let's uh, try to create some pro... Ooh. This looks quite dangerous. I think I got to play this. Get the double attack going here. Now c5. Move knight. This is collapsing for white. Now we will take. Because knight takes c3 or bishop takes c3 is going to hurt. Okay, what's the best way here? Both moves are probably good. I think both moves are winning. Uh, I see a way with bishop takes c3. I can maybe win my opponent's queen for a couple pieces. Aesthetically, I like this move better. Close call. Uh... 
Uh, uh, I'm going to take with the knight. But I bet if we go back and look at this, the computer is going to like bishop takes better. Maybe not. Maybe not. But I just like the look of this knight move. Okay, and now I'm going to play queen here. And try to get into this square. Also hitting the knight a couple times. I have visions of, like in an ideal world, maybe a smothered mate. It's part of the reason I'm doing this. I don't know that I'll be able to pull it off, though. This is a mate in two. So I might just have to do that. But I really would like to do this. And queen f1. There was a Morphe game where he did that, but the queen controls b2, so I think we just got to go for the prosaic queen d1. Still sacking the queen is kind of nice. It's a nice, efficient mate with the knight controlling e2. Go for the smothered mate. Thank you for the game, Smither fan. Yeah, it just doesn't quite work, right? But here's what I was thinking. Again, if the queen was not here, if the queen was not there, we could do this. You know what I mean? Ah, oh, that would be so nice. Yeah, famous Morphe game where he did that with the white pieces. But alas. All right, what do we think? Does the engine like knight takes c3 or bishop takes c3? It's really close. It's close between those two. It actually likes knight takes c3. Oh. Okay, bishop takes c3 falling. It even likes queen g5 more than that. Interesting. Well, one line I saw with bishop takes c3 is that here I could play knight f4 followed by rook takes d2. So that was how I could win the queen maybe for a few pieces. This is winning for black, but didn't seem as exciting as some of the other lines. So, Spiddler fan, if I were to offer you some advice. You played the London. Yeah, so here I think bishop d3 is a bit of an inaccurate move order. I think you should play knight f3, so it's harder for me to get the e5 move in. And let's say I go rook e8, or maybe queen e8. You'll probably want to put the bishop on e2, so that when this move comes, and let's say you retreat your bishop, e4 does not come with a fork on these two pieces. I already like black's position here, though, because this knight's a little awkward. But yeah, uh, that's why against the London, or with the London, when black plays something like d6, I think the London loses a lot of value. You might want to consider playing e4. Slightly different approach. I mean, you could still play this, but uh, you might want to think at least about switching it up and maybe going into uh, the white side of a Pierce. Thanks for the game. No Pino. Let's do this. 1974, good luck. Oh, I see Maverick on YouTube was saying, Knight, Knight is better. So you like Knight takes C3. I'm glad I played it. All right, let's try to get a Jinji in. Jinji Indian, one of my favorite openings. Ooh, they don't play into it, though. All right, we'll just play this the normal way. Take, take, Knight C6. Can I play the check, Peart's defense? Oh, you mean like the check, Benoni? Or is the check, Peart's a different line? So that may be um, like d6, c6, queen, c7. I also said I might play a Jobaba, and I have clearly not done that yet. Let's guard this. Have I got a uh, sponsorship from Starbucks yet? No, they still have not returned my calls. <laughs> but that's okay, because I'm not... I'm not drinking Starbucks coffee really these days. I have um, a couple coffee machines in my building now, which is awesome. Okay, this is looking good. What do I do from here? I feel like C5 might be a decent move. There's a standoff on the B file. I'm playing this even though it opens the light score bishop because I don't want my bishop tied down to the defense of the C6 pawn. And long term, I'd like to go after these guys. I'm thinking of stuff like this or this. Maybe bishop a4. Let's go here. Let's just see where white puts the rook. Oh, maybe they could go here. I guess I play a6 then. 
Okay, there I'm going to go here now. Attack this pawn. Maybe back to D... Whoop, don't pre-move that, John. Maybe back to D7 is better. All right, White's really opening it up. I think they had to go Bishop F1 there for what it's worth. Uh, let's take this one. I'm going to set a little bit of a trap. See if you guys can spot the trap. The key is you got to play this fast. Rook takes d6, rook b1. That's the trap. White's going to have to play bishop f1 and lose. They see it, though. They play bishop f1. Okay. Let's take and maybe rook here next. I'm just nursing uh, a pawn advantage in this position. Bring the king up next, probably. Have it help in defense. Check. And now I can probably just go after this guy. The A pawn is falling. All right. Up two pawns at this point should be a pretty straightforward technical win. But still got to be careful. <laughs> Charles on YouTube says, John, if you checkmate when you see this and five moves from then in that game, then I'll donate $100. <laughs> That's a very specific thing. But I appreciate it, Charles. If you did donate $100, it would go to Lee Chess. So that is a uh, further reason for you to do it if you, if you feel so inclined. Check. So we're going to drive this enemy king all the way over, and then I'm going to push this A pawn because that's just pretty annoying for them. Attack the weak pawn, push again. Now I'm going to go rook a4, most likely next. Really force white to defend, rook a2. They have a passive rook, and now we're just going to walk in here. And eject the rook, or force it to sacrifice itself for the a pawn. What's my favorite time control? Mm. Interesting question. Yeah, thank you, Nopino. For the game. I say my favorite time control is actually probably 3 plus 0. To play online at least. If I'm like having fun and also trying to explain a few things. For instructional purposes, I like 10 minute or maybe 15 plus 10. In tournaments, I like game in 90 with a 30 second increment. Yeah, so thanks for the game, Nopino. Um, definitely a tough, tough middle game. You know, whenever your white takes on C6... Black's pretty happy about that. You're kind of suffering here. I think the position was maybe not as dire as you probably thought at this point. E5 does lose a pawn. You can still play bishop f1 here, and it is pretty passive, but I, I would have to um, work pretty hard to, to make further progress. So I think you had to go here and defend this pawn. So thank you for the game. How do you sub with Prime? There should be an option in the bottom right-hand corner if you're viewing on uh, Nature. Good luck, by the way. If you're viewing on Desktop, there should be a button on Mobile as well. If you click on Subscribe, it'll give you a list of options. Thank you, Dottie, if you decide to subscribe with Prime. Let's go here. We'll try to play this like an improved version of a French defense. The bishop outside the chain. Yep, I do have my own Twitch channel. It is um, twitch.tv slash John Bartholomew. Just my full name, John Bartholomew. Just like Nightbot put in the chat there. Thank you, no joke. Uh, pawn or queen? I'm not really sure which one's better. I'll take with the pawn. I think queen takes 
just as good. Let's get this developed. Knight g6. The Aaron attack says, your advice to play three 15-minute games rather than 15 three-minute games if you want to improve always st stuck with me. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think you're going to get a lot more out of your rapid and classical games that you play online than your blitz games. And don't fall into the trap of thinking that volume is the most important thing. Like, there are a surprising amount of people who think that playing 100 one-minute games is equivalent to like the same amount of time spent playing um, good quality rapid games. It's just not the same. Mm, yeah, that might be the case, Dottie, that your Amazon account is not linked to your Twitch. Rufus versus Doofus, hello to you. Says the last over the board tournament I played was 40 and 120. Sudden death 60, and that's just too long. Some games were grueling. Ooh, yeah, that's a brutal time control. That's the time control Rufus vs. Doofus that I used to play as a kid in a lot of these national tournaments. Yeah, it was 40 moves in two hours. So both sides are getting two hours to make 40 moves. And if the game continues, you get an additional hour. Additional hour for each side. I mean, talk about. And there's like a five-second delay throughout. I mean, just way too long. I can't believe people regularly played games like that. <laughs> or longer in some cases. 90 plus 30. Because the major thing is you're playing two rounds per day in a lot of these events I'm talking about. So two rounds where a game could last, you know, four to six hours is just way too much. But yeah, 90 plus 30 is better. So 90 minutes per side with a 30 second increment throughout. Then you're usually done in, you know, three to four hours max. Four hours would be exceptional with the increment. Like that probably means you're playing a really long game. So most games are done in, let's say, like the two to three hour range. That's comfortable if you're playing two games per day. Okay, my bishops are going to cause White some pain here, I think. Rook e1, bishop b2. Ooh, the backwards knight move. So do I play this one or this one? I think I'm going to play this one. Take, and then I'm going to go here. Or maybe I take here. I think you go here, and my bishop might not make it out. So let's retreat here. Did I get better at bullet after I getting I got better at rapid? Um, might be some correlation there, but probably not so much just because bullet I feel is more about your mouse skills than anything else. Your strength may be reflected in your bullet rating, but not necessarily. You gotta have a fast mouse. Or be adept at using the, the mouse in general. Let's try to be sneaky here. Don't tell them. Okay, they saw it. Let's do F5. I gotta be a little careful that there's not a piece that makes an appearance here. Let's take. We're going after this white king. Nature's trying to keep it closed. I don't exactly know here. I want to open it up in some meaningful way, but eh, let's just play this one. I'll jump the knight up. I know that b5 and c6 are not the most secure here, but let's go after the bishop and the knight. Okay, um, could take the knight, but queen f6 is a problem. Let's do this. Okay, thanks for the game, Nature. So the bishops caused you some issues here. Yeah, this was a Scandi where white played e5, and I controlled the center from the side. I don't think this is a great line for white. 
At least, though, my bishop didn't make it to g4. Yeah, thank you for the game once again. I feel like things were okay for you around here. But maybe you got to move your queen or... Probably around here, the bishop b2 threat is starting to become significant. So maybe h3 is a mistake. Maybe something like queen c2 is better here. And then if bishop f5, you can perhaps go here. Still a little uncomfortable with my bishops, though, slicing into the position. Okay. Still got a ton of challenges. Over 100 challenges. Wow. Wonderful tactics is next. Good luck. Let's play a Smith Mora. Do I know anything about Mighty as Geometry Chessable course? Was nominated in the course competition and looked cool. Nope, I don't know anything about that one. Sounds interesting, though. Ah, this one. All right, let's go Bishop C4. Bishop B4. I think that's a little dubious. But let's see what happens. I feel like the dark square control should be pretty significant here. But again, let's see what happens. I'm going to go queen into d6. We're playing this more strategic in terms of uh, compensation. Queen's defending the bishop. I'm going to dare them to take this pawn. They do not take it, though. What to do next? Tricky, tricky business. Um, Rook d3? b5, I'll play the bishop back. Okay, knight moves. Let's go here. I'm trying to stop knight e5 just so I have a little more presence over here. Maybe bishop b6 is starting to become a thing. Queen could escape over this way, though, so I'd like to take that away. Interesting position. I'm down a pawn, but black's in a bind. They have trouble on the dark squares in particular. The Autumn Marathon. When is that? Oh, you love the Mora? Yeah, the Smith Mora Gambit's really fun. I agree. I like playing this every once in a while against the Sicilian. Oh, is Bishop B4 one of the major lines? I I don't um, know much about this variation then. I mostly see Black playing like Knight G7, Knight G6 here and keeping the Dark Square Bishop, but it's possible Bishop B4 nowadays is considered a pretty good approach. All right, we're going to set up a cheeky threat here. Take. Yeah, Mark Esterman is one of the prime players to follow on the uh, white side of the Smith Mora. He's a big expert. He's written a book on this opening. Okay, so Black's continuing to dig in here. Let's try to threaten stuff. Okay. Take once. Queen takes. All right, all right. Let's go f3. I'm still kind of playing this strategically in a way. I'm just basically saying, like, how's this bishop ever going to get out? But black is still up a pawn, it must be said. Greetings Nature on YouTube says, hi from Sri Lanka. Thank you for tuning in. All right, I feel like A4 has got to be the move here. Let's do it. Maybe black will play B4. Maybe they'll take. Still a tight game here. Yeah, I've never played one of those marathons where it's 24 hours. I mean, kudos to the people who do. <laughs> yeah, I've never attempted that. Let's take. I did play an over-the-board tournament called an Insanity Tournament when I was 
um, right out of college. And I think it was like 14 games of game in 30 over the span of like maybe a little over 12 hours, something like that. No, it had to be more than that in terms of the time. Maybe like in 18 hours. I'll have to look up the cross table sometime. But that was that was intense. Okay, let's go here. Now, I might be allowing this move, but my idea is to play bishop b5. I got to watch the time. This is a tight, tight game. Seems like I'm making some progress, though. It should be seven. I can always take. Time, time. Got to move blunderful tactics. I play 95 here, yeah. And just try to defend. Okay, finally, I went a pawn. Went a pawn back. Yeah. Things are collapsing now for black. Boy, these bishops are dominating. Take. Okay. Thank you for the game, Blunderful Tactics. Um, let's just verify if this is the one of the most respected lines. Someone in the chat said that. Could very well be the case. Yeah, interesting. I mean, it's not the most popular. Again, I'm looking at the Masters database. It's not the most popular. A6, Queen C7, D6. A6 makes a lot of sense because you want to control the B5 square in almost every line. Queen C7 scores pretty well. It's the fourth most popular move. Not played in too many games. But that being said, Black has a good score. So at least in the Masters database, Black's doing pretty well from this position. In the aggregate, out of... Over 500 games, black is winning a lot more often than white is. So that maybe indicates people know what they're doing when they go into this particular line of the Mora. Personally, when I face the Smith Mora as black, I don't, I don't take this pawn. I usually just play D3. But the theoretically approved thing to do if black's going to be really challenging is to take. Yeah, I don't know. This is a complicated game. I mean, I feel like my opponent played well for a long time. Even up to the very end. I mean, if you play, yeah, bishop a6 maybe at some point to trade. What was I thinking? I thought right here, maybe black had a better move. Yeah, probably bishop a6. Because if I trade, I can't even take d7 yet because I got to attend to this. So close game, blunderful tactics. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. You can also play knight f6 on uh, move three against the Mora and try to transpose to an Alapin. Good luck, interstellar noob from the UK. I think I've been staring at screens lately. My eyes are a little... I've been blinking a lot today. Hello, James on YouTube, by the way. I do see you. Interstellar Noob, are you there? Open up. There we go. Okay. <laughs> the knock always works. Put blue light filter on. Yeah, I might have to start using something like that. Hopefully my vision is not degrading. I haven't had to use glasses or contacts or anything, but, you know, I'm sure the time will come. By the way, how many of you guys have had LASIK surgery? I have a, I have a couple friends who've had LASIK, and they say it is one of the best things they've ever done for themselves. I have a couple friends who just... Absolutely rave about it.
consequences of white mode. Oh, you're talking about light mode. <laughs> Yeah, LASIK does seem a little bit scary, I agree. I mean, they're literally cutting into your eye, but very well-researched procedure at this point, right? Yeah, I was hanging out with my buddy and his wife recently, and they both had LASIK done. And we were looking at, like, basically the cityscape. We are up on a rooftop somewhere. And... um they were pointing out signs like very far away that they could see with like perfect clarity. And I couldn't make out like any of the lettering on the sign. And I have like fairly good vision normally. Like I'm positive. I don't have 20, 20 vision. Maybe I do in one eye, but definitely not in the other one. Maybe like 18, 20 or something like that. So my vision's like good, but not absolutely great. But they were, they were able to see these signs like with ease read these signs. I was very impressed. Was it starting to get dark? I don't exactly remember. I think it was in the evening, but there was a lot of light still. I know, right, nature? Don't tell me. <laughs> okay, this is going to be trouble for white. I think interstellar noob is going to be feeling the pain on the diagonal here in a second. And the worst part is, so a lot of times white could move this knight and be able to recapture with the other rook, but now moving the knight here or here is just going to see the knight get captured. Surreal says LASIK was great. My vision is still a bit blurry sometimes and the air is dry. Also, your eyes sag as you get older, so it's not always going to be 2020, from what I understand. Interesting. Okay, so they decide to give the knight. That might be one of the best moves under the circumstances. But yeah, now takes. We're still on this. I might have this. I'm envisioning a mating net. Eh, it's probably not going to happen, but. I was envisioning a mating net where I could go check and then knight g3 with uh, like my h-pawn here so I could recapture. Might try for something like that, but again, it's probably not going to occur. Yeah. Okay, let's just prop up the knight. Defend. Okay. Thank you for the game, Interstellar Noob. So he played the bird. And yeah, I think had you taken my knight or maybe played d4 here, it's still plenty competitive. I mean, even after you lost the pawn, like maybe I didn't play this so well. I actually feel right around here you might have had some compensation. g6 is an awful move, according to the engine. The move that I played here is really, really bad. Wants you to play knight c3 and aggressively attack here. Yeah, that would pose more problems, right? Because if I do this, then you can take d5. And now I'm going to be the one in trouble on this diagonal. So maybe, maybe that was the way to go, Interstellar Noob. Thank you for the game. Thanks to everyone for challenging today. We still got about 30 minutes, a little less. But um, yeah, appreciate everyone hanging out. This is always fun. Killer Rectangle. Good luck. What do I want to play here? Let's play let's play the French defense. Will I be streaming tomorrow? I might very well be streaming tomorrow on on uh, my channel, Charles. Let's play knight c6. This is a legit line. I play this sometimes too as white. Tarash. Knight f6 is one of the main moves. Bishop e7 is played. This is a little more aggressive. I think I can maybe take here or just take here. Let's take this one because this pawn looks impossible for white to guard.
yeah, I'm liking this a lot. If my knight jumps up to d4, c2 is going to be an issue. That's a pretty important pawn for white to have lost, and they don't get some compensation they might normally get, like in a gambit. Is c4 actually a legit move in the Tarash? I don't think so. Yeah, I think c4 is not good here. I can't imagine this is going to be a good gambit for white. Now, knight b4, when you're playing a move like that, you always got to look at whether queen a4 check is any good. Fork here and here, but fortunately I have my bishop defending, so queen a4 could be met by bishop d7. Yeah, now here I'm just going to pick this up, check, and then win this knight. So it looks like we're winning against killer rectangle. Maybe they'll bring in Killer Trapezoid next, kind of like K. Buckby did when K. Buckby brought in his sister to play. Or maybe Killer Square. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, thanks, K. Buckby. Glad you like that Italian game. Ooh, we have another near smothered mate. Again, if only this were a rook. If only that were a rook. Here, check. It's the same pattern. Knight g3, queen f1. Just doesn't work. Killer rectangle resign, though. Yeah, they are down two pieces here. So I probably would have gone, uh, in this case, go pick up the rook in the corner, more than likely. Thank you for the game, killer rectangle. Yeah, I think just c4 is not, not a good move. Uh, white can play knight f3 here is one of the main moves. Uh, I think that's probably the best move to defend this pawn here. <laughs> Big youth pastor energy. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I put in the title of one of my streams lately. Because someone, uh, someone commented on one of my YouTubes a few years ago that I like watching John. John has big youth pastor energy. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Hello, Wait Rose. What courses slash books would I recommend that helps with the middle game? Knock, knock. Soggy Olive. Your move. Courses with the middle game. We might have to... Ooh, Soggy Olive's there. Okay. Yeah, so the middle game is one of the hardest areas of chess to work on. Um, this is a, maybe a recommendation for slightly more advanced players, but... I really like this book called Mastering Chess Strategy by Johan Helston. That is one of the best books written on middle game planning, um, strategy, positional play. One of the best books written on that, especially in recent years. There's also a little book. It's maybe like $10 US on uh, Amazon called The Positional Chess Handbook that I really like. It's by um, the author Israel Gelfer. And the diagrams are like not so good. It's it's got descriptive notation. It's a little bit old school, but that's like it presents these nice bite size um, strategic examples, positional examples. But yeah, when I think of the middle game, I think a lot more about planning rather than um, you know, memorizing lines or. Like certainly there are elements of tactical play in middle games too, a lot of times. But it is the toughest area of the game to like give standalone recommendations because most most of the time your knowledge of the middle game is going to be built by just playing lots of games and analyzing them seriously afterwards. I think black should trade here because if bishop h5, they're going to run into g4. Where can I get the complete Scandinavian by John Bartholomew in paperback? <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I had a book title out on that that I could easily refer you to. I think Sagi is doing pretty well here, by the way. I might have a small advantage here, but I don't know about the position before then.
I think when white had the light square bishop not long ago, or when black had the light square bishop, I mean, they were doing just fine. Okay. Yeah, the curse, the commentator curse. I was praising Sagi Olive's play, and then they hung their queen. Just right on cue. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sagi Olive. Yeah, you were doing just fine up until then. I would bet the engine actually might give you a small edge. A small edge, maybe, um, after you win the pawn back. I probably, I don't know why I allowed bishop take c5. It wasn't, didn't connect to me that that was actually a threat. I probably should play knight b3 here. Although you might still have some compensation. Yeah, so after, after bishop takes c5, you're doing just fine. Yeah, wants me to play b4, defending the pawn. That's usually, if white's going to play d takes c5 early on in this line, that's usually what white's going for. But yeah, even up till almost the very end, it's about equal here. Next, we have Mansour Jobert. Thank you, everyone, for challenging 3 plus 0, by the way. We haven't had any um, instances of different time controls. A lot of times in the past, I've had to sort through people challenging, um, you know, 3 plus 2 or 5 0 or correspondence chess even, but didn't have to do that today. So thank you, guys. I'm going to go for this 150 attack, they call it, once again. It's just a pretty challenging line. Bishop e3, f3, queen d2. I'll try to get an attack just like I was describing in the other game. h4, h5. Let's sack the pawn. I mean, I think a lot of times when black takes here, this just helps white. So let's do it. Let's play the bishop in. And I'm looking to take. Take here, land the queen in on h6. That's the plan. First, let's deal with this. Hello, Scott Trick. That's just casual games now. Uh, it can be rated. If you want it to be rated, that's fine with me. Okay, black's not going to be instantly losing here or anything because... Well, let's take this one first. And that's because the queen will help defend h7 along with the knight. But this still looks pretty good for me. Let's check. Especially if I can get my light square bishop to c4. So let me think about this. Depends where the black king goes. Probably black should go to g8. I think that's almost a certainty. What to do next? I want to move this knight. I'm tempted to do something forceful here, but I don't think I can justify this. So let's just play knight g3. Looking for this. So maybe black will challenge now. Bishop a6. This still, still feels pretty good. Hmm. All right, so we're going to get this in with check. And now, for our next trick. Again, probably nothing crushing here. Maybe I just take and rook into d6, something along those lines. Let's do that. Keep it simple. There's a lot of weaknesses over here. Maybe I double. Maybe I just continue hammering this pawn. Black's allowing me to take. Any problem with this? I don't see one. Let's do it. Bishop b7. I can go here, perhaps. What do I think about the play-winning chess series by Yasser? Yeah, great series of books. Absolutely. Really good stuff there. Classic books. You know who was the publisher of those books? I think it was Microsoft. Which is, like, really random. You wouldn't think Microsoft was in the publishing business, much less chess books. But I'm pretty sure that's the case. Let's go here. A little more pressure. I'm going to wait on knight b6 because I might jump to c5. Zen Master says, I want to work for Lee Chess. Well, I know um, in a volunteer capacity, it's definitely possible, especially if you have a certain skill set. So I don't think there's too many people working uh, full-time for Lee Chess. It might just be Tebow, the creator. 
but I'm sure they could always use more people with certain expertise. Okay, very tempting choice here between this and this. I don't know which one's better. I'm going to do this one because it has the sneaky threat, but honestly, Black just might be able to sidestep. But it's very hard to resist this move. Uh, Ginger GM asking about lifetime repertoire Scandinavian. Not currently working on it, so it's kind of that project's a little bit on hold right now. No joke, Chess says there are like 10 to 15 paid employees, maybe 100 people overall working for Lee Chess, including volunteers. Wow. That's, that's a lot more than I would have thought, but that's amazing. That's a testament to the community. That's pretty cool. All right, maybe now I go here or here, probably here. We're really leaning on this pin. Now I'm actually threatening to take, and if black takes here, I take the rook. I think we can safely pre-move this, in fact. Yeah, absolutely. That is a lot of work to maintain a site like Lee Chess. And uh, Lee Chess has grown a huge amount, for sure, in the past couple of years. Okay, just putting the finishing touches on this game. There we go. Thank you for the game, Mansoor. Yeah, tough one. It's another one of these where I got the h4, h5, bishop h6 idea in. Black played a little more in the center. Again, I just don't know about knight bd7 here. We should actually maybe take a look at what gets played most often here. Yeah, it's usually e5 right away. Stats are not very good for black. Knight c6 is even a little more popular. Knight c6 might see black playing in the most active way possible. I do remember this line a bit. I think I remember analyzing this at some point. But yeah, I think this setup's a little dubious, Mansoor. I thought maybe you should play bishop a6 somewhere. Like I was thinking right around here might be a good time to do it, just so my bishop doesn't easily land here. But it looks like the position's pretty good for, uh, for white overall, plus three. It's looking a little too hard to keep all this together. Some pawn weaknesses and general weaknesses for black. All right, we're going to play one other normal game. And then, you guys know the drill. Bon Cloud Horsey coming up. I'm going to put in a food order here. That's my ritual. Good luck, primitive puzzle. Okay, let's play, let's play knight f6 again. Sorry, I'm trying to enter my food order. I'm going to run by Chipotle after this. Oop. All right, let's play, let's play G6. Let's mix this up a little bit. Okay, okay. Food order is in. Now D5, I'm going to try to stop E4. And they are not to be denied. <laughs> Using guac as a weapon. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Using guac as a weapon. I did not get guac this time. That's a reference to my using the clock as a weapon, by the way, series. It's a series I have on YouTube. What am I ordering, SN Master? I got a, uh, a chicken bowl from Chipotle. Okay, so I'm winning a pawn back here. So we're staying up one pawn. Once again, nice bishop in this position. We're going to keep it. 
Bishop f5, maybe knight c6. Probably not a whole lot of compensation for white. Look to castle and hit the bishop here. Hmm. By the way, World Championship coming up soon. I think we're like 40-some days away from the start. Who do you guys got in the World Championship? You going with Magnus? Or the challenger, Jan Nepomnesi. Ooh, this is a piece. This is another piece. Magnus all the way, says City Scout. Nepo gonna get crushed, says Gray Sensei. Love Seattle says, I want a new world champion, so I assume you're rooting for Jan in that case. Yoni Sack says, Nepo still very far from Magnus. Jan is a good bet, says Nature. Interesting. Yeah, I think Magnus is going to win. I think it'll be a pretty interesting match, though. I'm really excited to see uh, Jan in a match format. Always play Bishop F8 says, I want to see 24 draws. <laughs> what happens if there's 24 draws? Then we're deep in the tie breaks going to, uh, what is the final tie break of the world championship? Does anyone know off the top of their head? At what point do they go into Armageddon mode? <laughs> if there is even an Armageddon. As in, what point do they go into a scenario where black gets draw odds? Thanks for the game primitive pu puzzle. Yeah, so you can play this way. It's just that you don't want to play e4 here. I would recommend bishop f4, queen d2. You can play this like a Jobava London. A lot of times white will end up castling queenside. So that's a pretty good plan, especially because black has fianchettoed, or I will fianchetto, and you might be able to play bishop h6 and trade it off. So that would be my recommendation if you play this line instead of the E4 move. All right, you guys know what time it is. Last game of the day. Let's do this thing. All right, look away if you don't like the horse he set. Who, do we, who are we going to get? Okay, Ramaskas. Good luck. This is tradition. We got to play E4, E5, King, E7. White did not play queen h5 on move two. That would have been a problem. So we're, we're going to be facing this two knights variation, the derpy knights. Let's do this. All right, all right. Let's go g6. You guys want to see me bring my king out to, to f6? I know I do. We're going back, though. Okay, now I feel pretty safe. Even though the point of this opening is not necessarily to be safe. My king is nice and cozy over here. Fiend Keto King, yeah. He's just chilling. Let's play Rook B8. Let's attack this pawn down here. And now, tactic alert. I might play rook takes b2, followed by bishop takes c3. That is a possible idea. White's struggling to get dark square control here. That's kind of the problem with trading on f6. Ooh, and I get a chance to do it. Should I do it? Yeah, let's play it. It's flashy. I think it works. Like, maybe they could throw an e5, but I think I just take. So this is the point that um, there's a double attack here to win the material back. Okay, and now let's bring, eh, I don't know if I should allow the rook in somewhere here. Well, let's just develop though. I think it's all right.
Hello, K. Luth says, I think it's 14 classical, then up to four rapid, then up to 10 blitz, and then Armageddon. Interesting. 14 classical, four rapid, up to 10 blitz, and then Armageddon. Can you guys imagine Armageddon for the world championship? I mean, they got to decide it at some point if it gets to that. But it just seems so far-fetched that they would decide the world championship with that. But and I guess I, I wouldn't doubt it. This is my idea with Queen A8 to bring this rook over. Okay, we're both bunkered up here. I got a trade now. That comes with check by my opponent. Let's step, uh, let's step here. So I'm nursing a one pawn advantage in this position. Let's do this. Bishop B7 looks tempting, but I'm going to go Queen B8 and reverse this on my opponent. Okay. So now we're kind of in a interesting end game here. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to start trying to walk my king up. That's going to be the plan. Ooh, offering a trade. I don't think that's a good idea. Let's see if I can make it to the center quicker than my opponent. I think I can. This is the plan. Going after the pawn. They can play c4, though, to be fair. So maybe I should play c4 here. Here, here, f5. I mean, there, there's some draws tendencies if that occurs. So it actually might be a scenario where I should do this. Allow this, then go here. Take, I'm coming in. I think I'm going to do that. This is arguably risky, but I think I'm going to be faster. And I need to block my opponent from playing c4. I need to isolate this happy-looking pawn on d5. But we'll find out. We'll see what happens here. I got to eliminate a lot of pawns in order to get a pass pawn, but white also has to go a long ways to get this pawn going or to get the A pawn going. Your Glurg says Armageddon would be so funny, but at the same time, I hope it never happens. I kind of hope it happens just for the novelty of it. Okay, and, and I think White sees my idea. They're going to try to stop this, but now I do win this pawn straight up is the issue. And I think with two extra pawns, even though these are doubled, this is going to be too much. Let's play f6. Keep this nice and closed. I'm going to take with this pawn just so white doesn't get a breakaway pawn over here. All right, all right. c5 now? Uh, yeah, let's go c5. King f3, I'll go king e6, followed by d5. Now the plan is just d5, d4. Pass pawns. Pass pawns must be pushed. Bring the king in. All right. Thank you for the game, Ramuskas. Let's take a brief look at that ending. I kind of wonder, you know. Um, this feels just winning for black with the extra pawn, but as I was saying, if king e5 and white plays c4, these pawns are discounted. They're doubled. They're stacked. Your king occupies a decent position for now. Maybe I can try to eke out a win, something like this, but I wasn't quite sure. Let's see what the engine thinks, though. Hmm. I mean, this, this eval probably means it's winning for black, but it's not as clear-cut as maybe you would expect here. It says I should play h5 or king e5. What about this line? Okay, so the critical variation, let me switch back to uh, non- course he set critical variation is this now i was going to play king f4 take here ah but look at this <laughs> the engine is just like no this is equal take i was trying to calculate something like this and then try to sprint for a pass pawn but the engine thinks 
Good chance that this is just a drawn queen ending. I even queen first. And I can even go for a trade here. I could even do something like this. But now, now white can queen on c8. Yeah, and, and in this race is equal as well. Crazy. That's a lot to process, though. Still, though, I think white had to try king d4. Got to give this a shot. I'm pretty sure I would have played king f4. It's interesting here, a6 is an improvement. That stops king b5. That might be winning the engine, thinks, but would have to give it longer to process here, perhaps. Don't know that I would have played that. I might have just gone for king g3. Evidently, c3 is even better. c3 takes king e5. King, this is an instructive ending. Complicated. Then h5. Ah, and try to run white out of moves, like eventually win this somehow. And if king here be open to taking this, they go here. Interesting. Some scenario where I can use my king to maybe stop this, but I'm going to get a pass pawn here. Yeah, very complicated pawn ending. Told you white was way too fast. Well, I don't know about way too fast. White's like one tempo in time in those endings. But that's uh, that's hard. But yeah, thanks to the gamer Muscus. Maybe should have opened the position a little bit sooner in the middle. The engine's calling for moves like e5, being really aggressive when my king is on e7. Yeah, that would have been interesting. Stuff like this. Get lots of attackers before I get to Fianchetto my king to safety. Yeah, thank you, John Carter, by the way. Thank you, City Scout. Thanks to everyone for tuning in from for today. This was Lee Chess Plays. It's a weekly two-hour event where I play any, any comers and 3 plus 0 Blitz. And you guys make this happen. It's a lot of fun. Thank you all for spending uh, part of your Sunday with me. So thanks again to Lee Chess. Also, uh, No Joke Chess, one of the mods. Numeroid as well. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone, watching on YouTube as well. Looks like we're going to raid... Jesse February. So feel free to check her stream out as well. I will see you all next week, most likely. And uh, you can feel free to check out my channel as well. Twitch.tv slash John Bartholomew. Just my name. All right. Take care.